praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Peace, love, and salutations to your sincere brothers pushing the gospel and truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Zion, a friend of Yahweh Shai, with another lesson. And Lord willing, through the Spirit, this is edifying, right? Choose life, okay? Options that's been laid before you. We're ordered to choose life. This is the commandments from up on high. It's not the will of the Heavenly Father that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. Uh, the Most High didn't bring His only begotten Son into the world to condemn the world, but through His Son, all right, the world might be saved, okay? Um, Heavenly Father doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked, only that the wicked shall uh, repent and return from their sins. All right, this is the higher wisdom. This is um, the summit of knowledge. Okay. In these last times, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're pointing men back to the first century. We're letting you know about the birth, the life, the death, uh, the conquering of death, and the resurrection of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right. We're pointing back and telling you that look, this these events happened. These words are holy and true. All right, the Lord redeemed Adam first and foremost from the sins committed in the garden. All right, um, and if you call upon the names of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and you believe, all right, you invite him into your temple first by cleansing it out and inviting him into your temple, you know, the Rakakadash, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is going to enter into you. All right. So what we're doing right now is we're preaching the gospel. We are not teaching. You don't teach the gospel. All right. Um, big difference between the two, and it's very important to understand. Okay. The, the comfort of the Holy Spirit is to teach. It. All right. So we're giving a proclamation. All right. We're heralding, you know, what happened. We're telling you, all right, what happened. We are pointing. Toward Yahweh Shai, all right. We're pointing you in the direction of Yahweh Shai. We're telling you to make Yahweh Shai the center of your doctrine, the center of your attention. This ain't about Esau, all right. This ain't about Esau. This is about the elect, all right, repenting, all right, and then the destruction is going to come, all right. We're not, we're not concerned about anybody that can kill our bodies, but we're concerned about that sword that's going to come out of his mouth, that sharp two-edged sword. All right, those words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I have not known you. Those are the worst words you can hear. It's a million and gazillion, innumerable times worse than martial law, worse than a thermonuclear missile, worse than a gun, worse than a rock, worse than any carnal weapon um, or, or carnal person. Um, that you could uh, think of or even fathom, all right? Those words are going to bring eternal damnation, which there's no returning back from, okay? So, um, I, I want to I wanna go into this lesson, all right? We're going to keep bringing this out. Um, first of all, you know, concerning, you know, Esau, right? Or well, not concerning Esau, a lack thereof. The gospel was the gospel, all right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, was centered around the life of Yahweh Shai, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was centered around the birth, the life, and uh, the death of Yahweh Shai. The book of Acts was centered around the resurrection of Yahweh Shai and how we were to move forward um, concerning the nuances of this information, all right? Paul was a catalyst to push... All right, uh, ancient Christianity throughout the earth. All right, and Christianity, and the term, in in the Christianity in the uh, Google term, a Google definition, which is uh, the teachings of Yahweh Shah, the birth, the life, and um, the death of Yahweh Shah. As touching as concerning uh, Christianity as what it has turned into, uh, you know, Satan has obviously gotten a hold of every institution in this world. He this he's the prince of this world. 
All right. So obviously he's corrupted it, and 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 one of the things he's corrupt and how he's corrupted is, um, trying to get you to follow. Okay, we we had this term. Um, we keep the laws of Moses to the best of our ability. All right. When you really dive into the understanding, you understand Paul's letters. You understand the whole purpose of Yahweh Shai. You understand the difference between the covenants, the order of Mount Chesedek, the order of the Levitical priesthood. Um, you, you understand that that is a foolish, 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 asinine uh, 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 statement to make. All right, uh, it, it it makes absolutely, positively no sense. There's n nobody. You know, again, this is we're dealing with revelation. We're not dealing with information. A lot of you guys in these camps they have a lot of information, and the scriptures talk about forever learning, not being able to come into the truth, or the true knowledge, which is the true knowledge is we're, we're no longer underneath that old covenant, and and this is a very 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 important aspect and a step to understand. You know, not not just to understand, but it's it's literally the the grounds and the foundation. Of your salvation because it's repentance and, and you repent all right um you repent through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach which is your intercessor your your high chief priest your mediator that sits at the right hand of the throne of the living power all right and underneath that first covenant it is impossible it is impossible for Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to serve as the high chief priest because he is evident that he sprung out of, out of Judah And underneath the Levitical priesthood Underneath the first covenant Underneath the law of Moses You cannot serve And the priest As a high chief priest Or even a priesthood Alright Being a Judite So the scriptures tell you That the Lord changed the law Literally it tells you He changed the law So that the order of Mount Chesedek Could come into place Doing away with that old law Doing away with that old order Doing away with that old covenant all right, so when you tell it, so when you're out on the highways and byways and everything you're speaking about is condemnation, 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 death, 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 destruction, 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 Esau, 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 a carnal chip, a carnal chip, a carnal chip, right? The nigger woman, the nigger woman, the nigger woman. When you're constantly talking about things of the flesh and things of this world and not mentioning repentance, even as you know it, but even when you do tell people to repent, you're telling them to repent underneath the old covenant. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, and you 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 made yourself um, you 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 made yourselves uh, witches. All right, Galatians chapter three verse one. O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Yahweh Shai Hamashiach have been heavenly set before you crucified crucified amongst you. So. So, so when Paul was speaking to the church of Galatians, you know, as th the sheep, he was saying, who has bewitched you? All right. So there's somebody that's doing the bewitching, which are the men who are calling themselves teachers, i.e. the men who are trying to hold you underneath uh, that carnal law, underneath the law of Moses, which, which, which underneath the law of Moses, see, when, when Moses had taken credit for striking the rock, it was um, symbolic or metaphorically speaking or an analogy as to the man that was going to seek to justify himself in accordance to the law of Moses. He was going to be self-willed. He, he was, it, it was going to be something that he was going to do on his own. And that in itself is not of faith. All right. Salvation is going to be a gift. It's going to be something that's going to be given to you Predicated based off your belief It's not going to be something that you can do On your own This is the message The core message all right, Of, of the ultimate plan On why he, get, he given us this law Which was impossible For us to keep this carnal law of Moses Alright And the understanding of it is When you break one law Right You break them all You So immediately when Moses came down from the mountain and saw the children of Israel worshiping their idols, he hurled them down to the stone, uh, to the floor. Those stone tablets broke in two. That was a, 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 a the, the the law written on tablets. And since then, we've been waiting waiting for the promise of the heavenly Father sealing our hearts. 
in changing our spirits, okay? This Yahweh Shai did when he came down and offered himself up as a living sacrifice. And the Holy Ghost entered into men in the first century. Thus fulfilling the promise of a new spirit. So let's um Salakia, let me let's let's let me pull this scripture real quick before I move on. Ephesians chapter one verse three. Alright, this is Ephesians chapter one verse three. Uh, uh blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. Now you jump down to 13. Right? Start at 12. Just to uh, glide into it. Right? Uh, that we. That we should be. To the praise of his glory. Who first trusted in Christ. Uh, Yahweh Shai. In whom he also trusted. After that he heard the word of truth. Your gospel of your salvation in whom you, after you believe, were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which was uh, the new spirit that was promised to give, that he was going to give to the house of Israel. Ezekiel 31 and 18, cast away from you the transgressions that ye have committed. Uh, you make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? So this is the new heart and the new spirit that was promised to us from the beginning. Okay, so <clears throat> go to First Corinthians. Um, so now, What the Heavenly Father has did has done has done is He's made us ministers of the new covenant. Okay? Let's go to let's do this real quick. Let's do first Corinthians. Let's do first Corinthians the third chapter. Alright. So we're gonna go to first Corinthians the third chapter. And we'll start at uh, we'll start at six, okay. First Corinthians, oh, this is sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter three, verse six. Who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth light. So real quick, let's go to different sections of this, right? Let's go to the NLT. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is the covenant, not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death. But under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. So when you choose life, right? You have to choose Yahweh Shai. All right. When you choose life, you have to choose Yahweh Shai. All right, I eat the new covenant, the new spirit, the new heart, the new garment, the new song, the new man, the inward man that's renewed day by day, and that outer man, that fleshly man, that carnal law, that 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 Saul, all right, that uh, Haggai, that Ishmael, that Esau, that man of the flesh, that man of the field, that man of the sword, that man dies, and what grows in you is a new man. All right, this is the higher teaching, all right, that the scriptures is conveying, all right, to the elect, all right? So, it says we are ministers. What is a minister? What is a minister, right? A minister. Strong's G, 1249. Diakonos. Diakonos. A minister is 
one who executes the commands of another, especially a master, a servant, a attender, a minister, a servant, a king, a deacon, a waiter, one who serves food and drink, all right, by virtue of his office assigned to him by the church, cares for the poor and charges uh, of the distribution of money collected uh, for their use. So we, 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 we serve in this office <clears throat> and instead, all right, of a New Testament, which is i.e. covenant. Strong's G 1242. Diatheke. Diatheke. Right? Uh, a disposition arrangement of any sort which one wishes to be valid. The last disposition which one makes his earthly possessions after his death. A testament or will. A compact, a covenant, a testament. God's covenant with Noah, etc. Alright? So this is where ministers of the new covenant we're not ministers of the old covenant why because that old covenant brought death it wasn't able to bring life there was no faith in that old covenant in that old law all right there was no faith there faith came by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach so the old the old covenant i.e. the law or the Levitical priesthood was a schoolmaster to lead us toward Yahweh Shai until we got to Yahweh Shai and then once Yahweh Shai came, he completed the purpose of that law. All right. Now he's taken over and now enters faith into the chat. But before then, we were shut up unto faith. All right. It, it was sick. That was sealed. All right. From us. OK. So let me um, let me continue to read here. Um, who has made us. A, uh, able ministers of the New Testament, i.e., the New Covenant, not the letter, not of the letter, right? The Levitical priest or the letter of the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth light. But if the ministration of death written in engraved stones was glorious, which was that law, that law was written in engraved stones, but that was the ministration of death. So when you, when you, when you are a minister of that old law. Which you are, you're a, a ministry, you're a, the ministration of death. You're a minister of death. You are a minister of death and you're holding men in bondage because that's the only how Satan could have power and dominion. So when you sin, all right, the, the consequences for, for, for death underneath that old law, uh, the consequences for sin underneath that old law is death. So when you sin, you're handed over to those principalities. So Satan don't got to try to get you to sin. He just got to try to get you in a mind frame of trying to keep that law so that he could have dominion and power over you. All right. So the powers can't do nothing for you. You know, this is a, a spiritual battle that you have to you, 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 you bring this upon yourself. All right. By what comes out of your, your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth is in your heart. It's in your brain. It's in your lahab. It's your thinking. Right. So you're, you're handing over your, yourself. All right. And your congregation to these principalities. But you're keeping your people in the endless cycle of wickedness. All right. Of a of a, 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 a rinse and repeat a repeat. All right. Year after year holding the, the uh, day of atonement, which doesn't do nothing for you. It only reminds you of your sins. The scriptures say. It only reminds you, so it keeps you in a perpetual state of, of, of not being right, of condemnation. All right? That's why Paul said there is now no new condemnation to them that dwell in Yahweh Shai. All right? But the, the old law, underneath the old law, underneath the old way, that was filled with condemnation. It was, it was, it was by the flesh you walked. You, you were made right by yourself. You wasn't made right through the Spirit. Right? It says, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his continents, which glory was to be done away. All right. What was to be done away? I.e. that old law. So now the new law could enter into, which is the law of faith. There's a difference between the two. And men, um, they, they don't understand this. And this is where they err. This is where you get statements where we, we follow the law of Moses to the best of our ability. All right. When you understand that, you know, what the scriptures is actually saying, that's foolishness. And this is what the foolishness that Paul um, was, was referencing. 
All right, that says, uh, "Behold, the face of Moses' glory in his contest, uh, which glory was to be done away." Right? Um, how shall uh, How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be, be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. By reason the glory that had exalted. For if that which is done away with was glory. What's done away with? That old law. That old covenant that was broken. So until that old covenant was broken. We awaited for Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Which was that sacrificial lamb. To bring us into the new covenant. Alright. How did he did that? He did that with the shedding of his blood. The first covenant was established after the blood of the bullock, and it was sprinkled upon the people. Now Yahweh Shai was the real sac was a real uh, sacrifice. All that was just a shadow of something more glorious to come. All right, something that was carnal, so that you can understand how things operated in the spiritual. So now that we understand this, all right, we're not held underneath that old standard anymore. But we are Yahweh Shai Masiach is our lamb. He is our atonement. He is our Passover. So we don't hold that old Passover with uh, leaven. Alright. That old carnal Passover. That's done. He is the Passover. Alright. So this is the understanding of what was being taught in the first century. This is the reason why the men were being persecuted in the first century. This is the reason why the apostles were being put to death. This is the reason why Yahweh Shai Hamashiach ultimately was put to death. This because they because of this teaching. It went against what Moses was preaching. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Moses put the veil over his face so that the children of Israel couldn't see that the glory was fading away. So that's what Moses did in his self-will. That's why it says, and not as Moses would put a veil over his face, that the children could Israel could not steadfastly look at the end which was abolished. What was abolished? That's my question to you, brothers. What was abolished? The law of sacrifice? This is what you guys are saying was just the law abolished? The law of sacrifice was abolished? So you're telling me that old covenant wasn't abolished? It wasn't the law of sacrifice that was abolished. It was the law, it was the, the what, what Yahweh Shah did by coming and dying was he completed everything that the law stood for. The all the law was 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 doing was uh pointing you toward Yahweh Shai. Telling you that in order for a man that was alive to remain alive, alright, in order for a guilty man to remain alive, something innocent had to die. Alright? That's the only cure for sin. So that what that's what the law was alluded to. Alright? And everything else was wrapped up into loving the most high with all your heart and loving your brother like you love yourself. The whole key part was the acceptance of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Your body being a, a, a temple, a tabernacle for the spirit of the Lord to enter into. Hence from there he got you. It's going to be easy. That's why he said my burden is light. It's not heavy. That old law. That was a heavy burden. That was a heavy burden. It's easy when the spirit of Yahweh Shah is in you. You're not going to be taught by me. That's why we're not. We, we, we are preaching. So when Paul was saying certain things. Like um, when he used the word teach. It was concerning how to. Uh, how, uh, uh, for instance. Uh, Titus, like, don't let them despise your youth. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna teach you some things. So I speak as a man. I'm gonna teach you how to maneuver. I'm gonna teach you this certain things that was outside the gospel. But as far as the gospel goes, the gospel is us preaching. All right, for you to cleanse out your temple so that the Holy Spirit could dwell inside of you. And then once the Holy Spirit dwell inside of you, that uh that comforter was going to teach you all things. All right, so this is what we're doing. Um, it says uh. I says, uh, okay, I says, the children of Israel could not, uh, this is back in 2 Corinthians uh, 3 and 13, could not steadfastly look uh, to the end of which is abolished, but their minds were blinded 
for until this day remaineth the same veil untooken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Alright, so you have men, you got men whose minds are blinded when they read the Old Testament. Alright, they're, they're blinded because they don't have no understanding. Alright, because uh, they believe that they're underneath, where, they're underneath the Old Testament. So they can't see, they have a veil over their face. They have a veil over their face. But their men who are blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away with in Yahweh Shai. But even until this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn uh, uh, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So they, they state make statements again. Let me go back. Um, let me go back to Galatians. Let me go back to Galatians, right? Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Yahweh Shah have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So, what was the purpose of his crucifixion? For you to, to, to hold on to the old law of Moses? For you to hold on to the old covenant? For you to hold, keep those old garments on that were filthy? What, what was the purpose of Joshua taking off the, the dirty garments and putting on clean garments? My friend, how thou entered into here without a wedding garment? What was Yahweh Shai speaking of? He was speaking of the two covenants. What was the bondwoman all about? The bondwoman was representing what? Matter of fact, let's go to the next chapter. Let's go to the next chapter. Uh, next chapter, I think it's actually the fifth chapter. Right? Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Yahweh Shah has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. All right, what is the yoke of bondage? That bondage is that law. The old law of Moses is the yoke of bondage. Yahweh Shah has made us free from the old law of Moses, all right, so that we can enter in into the new law of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, if ye be circumcised, Yahweh Shah profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So when you say, hey, we, sir, we, we, we're underneath the old covenant, the first covenant. Again, I'm, this is redundant, I know. I have to keep saying this. But when you say, we're under, we keep the old law of Moses to the best of your ability. When you underneath that old law, you're indebted to do the whole law. That's how it was set up. Yahweh Shai has become non-effect unto you. Alright? So once you break one underneath the old covenant, he's become non-effect unto you. And what you what men are doing is they have the ability because they have huge platforms, right? They have position and power within Israel. So some of these men know and they don't give a damn, right? Because they don't want to get put out the temple. But some men, they have an understanding, they have an inkling of this, right? So the Lord is calling on you, all right, to 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 tell the truth. To release men. Release these men that are captives. It's not about Esau because it's about repentance. When you go to Revelation, the seventh chapter, it tells you, it tells you that the uh, destruction, the angels are holding the winds. So the destruction is not going to come until the servants are sealed. What is that seal? The seal is the new covenant. That the war. That's what that means when you break it down in the Lashawan Kadash. It said you were sealed with the with the with the Holy Spirit of promise. For I testify again unto every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Yahweh Shah has become non effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which is worketh by love. So you don't have to hold the Passover. You got to have faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach that he was the Passover. You don't have to put blood in the post of your door. 
You have to have faith that he, you, you, uh, he shed his blood for you, which was the purpose of the Passover. So in that old one, it was about death and destruction, but this one is about deliverance. That old Passover was carnal. This one is spiritual. That old law was carnal. Right? It wasn't of faith, but this one is of faith. This new, this new thing is of faith. Galatians chapter 5 verse 15. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Use it not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love and serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in a one word. Even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. Thou shalt not, if somebody smites you on the left cheek, hit him, hit, uh, uh, hit, uh, smite him on his right cheek. Or somebody gorge out your eyes, you gorge out his eyes. That's not what Yahweh Shah is commanding us to do. That's not what the elect of the Lord is going to do. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. For this then I say, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary, the one to the other, so then you cannot do the things that ye would do. But if ye be led by the spirit... Ye are not under the law. We're, 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 we're read by the Spirit. We're not underneath this law. This law has no effect on, on us. This law was a schoolmaster. Let me go. So much. There's so much here, man. There's so much I want to go into. There's so much to go into, man. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Right? Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness. Hey, man, it's so it's a beautiful thing to have a cleansed out temple, bro. To have the spirit of the Lord dwelling in you. The, the, the fruit of the spirit is something that you can't hide once the how it shines in you. Love is going to be something that's going to be natural to you. And guess what? That's a love to everybody. Every and anybody. That's not to a selective brother or people who believe in you. That's a fucking narcissist. You gotta be a narcissist to love people who only love you. That's that's weird. That's why all this chaos and confusion. That's that's Cain. That's Cain. That's um. That's Esau. That's Esau. That's carnal. That's carnal. That's self-willed. That's of that serpent, man. Idolatry and witchcraft, right? Enchantments and throwing up curses on people on, on a date. Like, come on, man. That stuff is off. Heresy is just making up stuff. There's no place of of, of of wrath, of torment forever. When the Bible clearly talks about it. That's a heresy. Oh, Lazarus and the rich man. That's talking about uh, Esau. The thief come not to steal and to kill. Oh, that's talking about Esau. That's talking about Jake. Jake is a thief and a murderer. Don't let this man off the hook. Get on his ass. It's for he the let gotta be sealed in order for the destruction of Esau to come. Esau's destruction is written in stone. It's written in stone. He is not the center of attention. He's not. He is a fucking distraction. He is the ultimate distraction. Or a bridge burns down. That's fucking distraction. That's distraction. What Puffy is doing. That's a fucking distraction. The apostles wasn't worried about worldly shit. In the ancient world. They wasn't. They wasn't caring about their fear. There was no end breaking news. Such and such. This happened around the Roman Empire. This happened in Roman. They, 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 you know. This just, just wasn't. The scriptures say, no man that wharf entangleth himself with the affairs of this world. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. 
No man that warreth entangleth himself with the fears of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. We aren't, we aren't concerned about the things of this world. We're concerned about preaching the gospel. We're concerned about pushing Yahweh out. We're concerned about the elect repenting. So we could get the hell out of here. There's no repentance for Esau. The spirit of Esau. I have to, you have to make mention of if The Lord is dealing with the spirit of a man. There's a spirit of an Edomite. Esau being, you know, the so-called white man who, who uh, if you will, who, 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 who so proclaims himself, you know, who's taken over uh, Western Europe, taken over America. The carnal man, you, you, uh, you are as an Israelite can suffer the same fate as this man. So it's not about something that's according to the flesh; it's the spirit that you come in. That's why the Lord said, "Yeah, you follow the devil. I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me." So carnally, they came from, you know, yeah, the spirit, the 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 seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, but they made spiritually their father was Satan, man. Envying, murder, and drunken, and really, you gotta ask yourself: uh, does, does your camp teach this? Do you, does your camp teach uh, fornication? It's okay to sleep with prostitutes. Oh, we're in the flesh. Are you, is your camp teaching uh, that bewitching? You think of, it ain't talking about just making pentagrams and, you know, sat, you trying to hold keep men in bondage, bro? That's witchcraft, man. Hatred. So I guess I, yo, oh, bro, I legit. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I legit. Every now and then, I try to watch these videos. I get a headache watching these guys. Nothing but hatred, hatred, hatred. No love. No love at all whatsoever. Hatred and wrath, sedition. Envy and murder and drunkenness and revealing. All right. And such like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And they're telling you that you will inherit the kingdom of God. They, they got men that are telling, telling you that this isn't true. They're telling you that what Paul is writing in the book of Galatians, what Yahweh Shai is stating, what the Apostle John is saying, is not true. We're telling you that, yo, if you're an idolater or a witch, you're into witchcraft, you're into sorcery and the strife and hatred, you are not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Lord said, if you hate your brother in your heart, you are a murderer. A murderer. Like, well, I don't understand what's so hard. You know, I, I can't say that because this has been given to me as a gift. And I thank the Lord that he put, put us up out of that fire. To make us see his, uh, but it came with the cleansing up of our temples. So that the Holy Spirit could suck with us. But check this out, right? Uh, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So when you, when you, when you show these attributes, they, they'll make fun of you. They'll mock you. They'll ridicule you. They'll call you a Christian. They'll say you watered down. They'll say you soft. And they that are uh, Yahweh Shai's have crucified the flesh with affections and the lust. So they're telling you that they're waiting for new bodies in order to receive this new spirit. In order to receive this uh, understanding. In order to receive perfection. They're waiting for new bodies. But Yahweh Shai died for the elect and crucified the flesh with the affections of the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. So they're telling you that we don't need new bodies. In order for the, the new spirit, to, to, the Holy Spirit to enter into us. The apostles didn't need new bodies in the first century in order for um, the Holy Spirit to enter into them. And the Gentiles didn't need, the Gentiles didn't need, uh, Romans the second chapter. Slack here. The Gentiles didn't need new bodies in order for them to receive the law in their inward parts. Is that Romans 3? Is that Romans 3? That's Romans 2. Romans 2. Alright, Romans 2 and 16. I'll start at 14. Uh, Slack here. 13. It says, for, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law 
are just before uh, uh of the law shall be justified. You gotta understand what law that the Lord is that Paul he's speaking of two laws, uh prim mainly three when you look into when you go into the book of Romans. Alright? Moses' law and Yahweh Shah's law. So you have to discern what it is that he's speaking about. And he often in the same senses will refer to both laws. So it can be very confusing, but you have to rightfully divide the word of truth here. For when the Gentiles which have not the law, Gentiles have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. So why are we telling men that we have to wait for new bodies in order for the law to be written in our hearts? The law is already written in our hearts, starting with certain men. It happened already in the ancient world when the Holy Spirit was on certain men, when they established the, uh, the, the priesthood underneath the order of Melchizedek. But Satan is at work destroying all right, this. So this is why we, 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 we do lessons so that you brothers... All right, that primarily in these camps could come to this uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. All right, so that a mass exodus out of Egypt, i.e., bondage, all right, and men could be baptized with the word and enter into the kingdom spiritually and fig and uh, figuratively. But first, before we do it physically, there, there's some things that has to be done spiritually, right, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts. Uh, to the meanwhile accusing or or else excluding one another. Let me get this in another version real quick. So let's do Bibles. I just want to look at this in the NLT. Uh, they demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them that they are doing right. So that's that that's that's what's happening. When the Holy Spirit is in you um, the, the Holy Spirit will um, accuse you So you know that you're doing something wrong When you're doing something wrong That's the Spirit teaching you Right from wrong So um, Let me see here I'm going to close it on Hebrews 8 Hebrews 8 and 1 Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 Now of the things which I have spoken This is the sum We have such a high priest Who is set at the right hand of the throne Of the majesty in heavens a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high chief priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is a necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if we have on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who have served as an example and a shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith, that thou make all things according to the pattern which showed thee on the mount. But now he hath attained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then shall no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. I regarded them not, saying, Saith the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be unto them a God and they shall be unto me a people. So if the hang up or the hiccup is you're waiting, for, we're not underneath the new covenant because the law has to be written in our inward parts. I just proved to you that in the first century, men had this understanding. All right. Of the law being written in our inward parts. This is the last hurrah. This is the last go around, brothers. This is the last go around, brothers. This is very, 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 very important. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, 
for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. It's not about, we're not teaching, we are preaching the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to teach you. The Lord said, I will send you the comforter and he shall teach you all things. John chapter 14, uh, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things into your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. So we're, we're not, we're, there are certain things that we're teaching, all right, you know, um, showing men how to go about things, but it's the Holy Spirit what we're pushing you to Yahweh Shai. Once the Holy Spirit gets into you, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to teach you and convict you and 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 move you to do what is right. For I will be merciful to the unrighteousness, and their sins will I remember no more. Who is merciful to unrighteousness? And and that he saith the new covenant, he hath made the of uh, made the first old. Now that which is the calf waxeth old and is ready to vanish away. Okay, so hope and pray that that was edifying. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Peace, love, and salutations to you, brothers, uh, pushing the gospel, the, the new covenant, and truth and sincerity. Till next time, I say, Shalom.